Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, and on today's episode, five heavy songs from non-heavy bands. These are bands that you would never consider them to be heavy metal. You might not even consider some of these bands to be hard rock, but they've got a song in their catalog that that is really heavy, that could be a metal song. All right, so five bands, uh, five songs here. We're going to start with uh, maybe one of the really early examples of this, The Beatles. This is The Beatles' White Album, and the song Helter Skelter. The Beatles... Certainly not a metal band. I wouldn't even I wouldn't consider them a hard rock band either by by any stretch. But this is a pretty heavy song. The guitars are all distorted. The way the drums are sort of pounding. The vocals are almost screaming at at times. And it's it's a really aggressive song for the Beatles and probably their most aggressive <laughs> aggressive song. So Helter Skelter by the Beatles. All right, number four. I actually don't have this on vinyl, but the song Battle Scar by Max Webster. Max Webster is a band that can get pretty, I'd call them hard rock. Uh, you know, I wouldn't consider them metal, although maybe at times they sort of drift into that, but I consider them more to be a metal band. But the song Battle Scar is a super heavy song. It starts off with just the bass hitting this, hitting the low string. And then when the guitars come in, it's just got a real kind of slow, heavy uh, feel to it. Uh, in fact, the first time I heard that song was uh, the band Talus, which is Billy Sheehan's first band. Billy Sheehan played with David Lee Roth on Eat Him and Smile. He's the bass player and he uh, plays bass with the Winery Dogs now and a bunch of other bands. But his band Talus used to do a cover of that song. And the first time I heard it, I thought it was a Talus song because Talus is like a hard rock metal metal band early 80s uh so i was surprised when i was like oh this is max webster and i didn't know a whole lot about max webster i always heard martin popoff talk about max webster so i searched out max webster and heard the in the original version of that song is just as heavy i thought well maybe they just heavied it up but no the original version is really heavy okay uh next is uh Foreigner from the first Foreigner album, a song called Star Rider. This one is really surprising. Uh, this is a super cool, really heavy song. It's kind of moody. It's got some big power chords in it. Again, Foreigner, a band that you typically associate with the more melodic radio kind of rock, but this is a really heavy song and it really makes you wish like, man, if Foreigner had gone down this road, uh, they could have been really successful. Lou Graham was an amazing voice. He sounds amazing on this song. And it's just a super kind of moody, kind of dark, heavy song. And it really stands. I mean, this is the first Foreigner album, so maybe they hadn't quite settled in 100% on their sound and they were maybe trying some different things. But man, it really makes me wish that they had done more of that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, the next one, I don't have this one on vinyl. Uh, Neil Young, Cinnamon Girl. I actually could have picked a couple of different Neil Young songs. He's a guy, he's mostly known for like kind of more mellow acoustic guitar stuff, but he can get really, really heavy. And there was a bunch of uh, Neil Young songs I could have picked, but I went with Cinnamon Girl just because that main riff is crushing. It's like a really heavy, heavy uh, riff. And Neil's had his phases, electric phases, where he does play more electric stuff and it is it is more heavy, but that's kind of an outlier in his sound. And most people don't associate him with, uh, you know, with, with that kind of sound. They associate him with like Heart of Gold and, and stuff like that. So Cinnamon Girl for me, mainly because of that main riff. It's just like that down on the open string there, you know, pentatonic blues uh, lick. And it's really, really heavy. And Neil Young... You hear a lot of the grunge artists cite Neil Young as an influence, and it makes sense to me because he had this element to him where he could play really heavy uh, type of stuff, fuzzed out, loud amplifier uh, type stuff, and then he could do the gentle kind of acoustic stuff. So it makes sense to me that he was an influence on a lot of the grunge bands. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's do... Uh, all right, so I'm at my last pick. And my last pick is Pink Floyd from the album More, which is a soundtrack album. And the song is called Nile Song. And I, I did a uh, episode 
Pink Floyd's 10 heaviest or five heaviest songs. And I'm sure I mentioned this song in there because this is by far one of the heaviest uh, Pink Floyd songs. It is big crashing power chords. Uh, uh, David Gilmour uh, sings lead on this one and he's way up in his range singing really aggressively. He's not really a singer. You know, normally he has this very relaxed, mellow kind of voice, but he's really pushing his voice and, and getting really kind of loud with it. And I, I love when Dave David does that. He doesn't do it very often. Maybe like in Not Now John that from uh, the final cut. That's another one that I probably could have put on here because that one's that one's pretty heavy. But for me, the Nile song is just big and nasty and huge distorted guitars and everything so that's another uh, heavy song from a non-heavy band all right there you go five heavy songs from non-heavy bands let me know in the comments down below some uh, some songs that you think are really heavy from bands that are typically not heavy or ve not very often heavy okay let me know in the comments down below till we see you again make sure you stay heavy stay metal